Hello. In this demonstration, we'll take the formulation of question number two that we already learned how to formulate, and we'll see how we can use Excel to solve it using Excel Solver. It will be two steps process. The first step will be to set the template. So we'll learn about what are the guidelines that we need to have in our template. The second step will be to run solver and to understand the result of the output. So this video will show you step number one, how to set the template. So we'll start by looking at our formulation and we can see that we have two variable. It means that we need a space for two variables in our Excel spreadsheet. So first of all, I'll start by clicking and placing the label, <clears throat> sorry, for each variable. Um, and then I will create two cells that will capture the position of the variable. So later on when we'll run solver, the optimal solution will be in these two cells. So this D8 will represent X1 and E8 will represent X2. On the bottom part, um, I will write the coefficient of the objective function. In this scenario, we have a profit of $8 per unit, so I'll write eight. And for X2, we have $5 per unit profit, so I'll write five. Um, obviously, you can format that to currency. And the next step will be to calculate the profit. In order to do that, I will use a function called sum product. So I'll type equal sum product. And what I'll do is I highlight first the area of the variables and then a comma and then the area of the coefficients. What Excel will do is we'll multiply variable X1 by the coefficient for that variable and we'll multiply variable x2 by the coefficient of that variable and we'll sum everything together. Obviously now we have nothing because our cells are empty. This is step number one on setting the um, template we learned that we need to have a space for our decision variables and we need a certain cell to hold the objective function with a formula or function um, creating that cell. In this case, we remind ourselves that we are maximizing the profit. And our next step is to proceed to the area of the constraints. So we have a few constraints. We have plastic. We have um, production time. We have um, a certain minimum minimum amount um, that maximum amount that you, we should not exceed. So I'll call it uh, constraint number three. We have a certain mix that we need to apply, and the non-negativity will be treated by solver. In the area under the labels, I will write the constraints coefficients. So basically I'm treating now the left-hand side of the constraints. So for plastic, we have two and one. For production time, it's three and four. Look at your constraint and just, you know, write the coefficients. For number three, it's one and one. And pay attention in number four, the mix, the coefficient for X1 is one, but the coefficient for X2 is negative one. Okay, so these are our coefficients. What I will do now is I will create the left-hand side of the constraint. I will create a formula that will actually will calculate the left-hand side basically multiplying the coefficients by the decision variables. So again, I'll use the sum product. 
and I will highlight the variables, but when I highlight the variables, I will anchor them using um, the dollar signs and then a comma. And then I will highlight the coefficient of the constraints. That will be my first row. And using autofill, I will copy that formula to the rest. So obviously now it's zero because our decision variables are empty cells. If you look inside, you can see the function for all the cells, the decision variables multiplied the coefficients of that constraint. For myself, I will write which sign the constraint um, I will need to use. So it will be less than equal for all of them in this scenario. So it's um, just to help me later on. I will not use that in the solver, but it's nice to have. And in this um, area, I will designate it to the right hand side of the constraints where we want to see coefficients only. So I'll just copy our resources 1000, 2400, 700, and 350. Okay, so we have all set. This completes the process of setting the template. Again, remember, you'll need to have an area that holds your decision variables. So if you have two, you'll have two cells. If you have 20, you'll need 20 cells. You need an area to hold your objective function. In our case, it's the profit. Um, and that will need to be defined by a certain formula inside that cell. So we use the sum product. And you'll need the left-hand side and the right-hand side. And don't forget that the left-hand side needs to be defined by formula. That's complete the template. In the next video, you'll see how do you set and run solver.